Hello everyone, my name is Decker Link, the Train Dumb Professional, and welcome back to Extracurricular Activities. I streamed for four fucking hours yesterday, so uh, naturally I wanted to take the today to be a little more relaxed, a little more easy on the throat, uh, something like that. Uh, and then I remembered that today's schedule said that we were going to do a Herald Day, which means one of the hardest voices for my throat. Um, yeah, <laughs> so let's do it. Hello everyone in the chat. We already have 18 people watching and we haven't even done anything yet. Y'all are fucking awesome. So let's get right into the mix of shiz right here. <clears throat> and voila, day 28, let us do the thing. Hmm. Hmm. It's so quiet, and my screen is dusty. What the fuck? Why the fuck would my screen be dusty? What the hell? You were wrapped up in a blanket on Harold's bed, and you rolled over to find the bed was empty. Oh, Harold's gone. Where'd he go? With nobody else on the bed with you, you took the chance to sprawl out in the center of it. I feel like the music is really quiet right now. Ah, there's so much room on his bed, I wish I could sleep here every night. You just stared up at the ceiling while you laid there, thinking back to the previous night. Man, last night, things got a little wild at the end. I mean, the entire night was a lot of fun, but the end... Whoa, I really did that, didn't I? I would, never have, I would have never thought that I'd end up sleeping with my teacher, let alone being the one that was on top. <laughs> I really took him for a ride, though, and he seemed to love every minute of it. <clears throat> Can't deny that I enjoyed it, too. Heck, thinking about it is making me hard. Uh... Oh, you haven't caught up yet, Lutheran? That's okay. You do what you gotta do. That's one thing that is uh, fortunate about these routes, is that you can... Uh, since I always put whose route it is in the title, you can always find whose route you want to watch in the playlist uh, so you can keep track of specific characters if you so please because I do play them out of order <clears throat> because it would be pretty fucking unreasonable to only do one character when there's a plethora of wonderful characters to choose from it was such a delight You reached down under the blanket to adjust your forming erection, and that's when another thought crossed your mind. Come to think of it, I should go take a shower or something. I don't really—I didn't really clean off last night. I was so spent. There's dried cum in my pibs, and thinking, and that, and things feel kind of greasy from the lube. The blankets and sheets should all be washed too, I'm sure. Not to mention, a certain bear's load hit the wall and headboard, so we got to clean that up. I've never seen anyone come like that before, and the look of the sheer shock on his face was priceless. We, have, we just have such a mess to clean up. But where is Harold? You sat up, and that's when you heard something from the bathroom. A couple minutes later, Harold emerged. Emerged. Alright. <laughs> Gonna have to edit that. Ah, oh, you're awake. I hope I didn't keep you up. You didn't. I was wondering where you were, though. I got up a little bit ago uh, to uh, clean myself up after last night's romp. My fur was matted and greasy, and I just had to wash up. I even had jizz in my hair. I can't believe I shot that far. I was impressed. I've never seen such a feat. We made quite the mess, didn't we? Yeah, we did. He sat on the edge of the bed and scratched his fingers over his stomach. Well, why don't you go take a shower, and I'll start cleaning up in here. I'm sure you'd feel refreshed afterwards. 
Sounds like a good idea, but I should help clean. I help make the mess. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I can handle it. Mm-hmm. You sure you can handle it, huh? How do you feel, by the way? Sore at all? You fiddled with his tail while you spoke and it wiggled around. A little bit, but it's not too bad. You're certainly not a small guy, so that's to be expected. Maybe I should be a little gentler next time. Are you kidding? With a playful growl, he pulled your face to his and kissed you. I wouldn't want you to do it any other way after what I experienced last night. <laughs> Strawberry on a 60-inch plasma TV. <laughs> oh, I'm sure this this picture looks wonderful. <laughs> Stretched to those proportions. You better believe you're going to get the same treatment from me, too, one of these days. He kissed you once more and slid his paw over the blanket, giving you a cratulate squeeze. Just put the strawberry over the dick. The problem is, I don't know when another dick will fly up on the screen, so I have to be... I have to be careful. Go get in the shower now. Let's get the day started. We have to make sure things are ready for the guys later. Mm, alright. Yeah, see? I knew it. There's another dick right there. And if I had just put it over the crotch, then I would have had to edit another bit. Uh, so yeah. Fucking, you don't know it, but I'm right. <laughs> Holy shit, he has a good bathroom, though. Giant shower. If only you could see it. <laughs> He's, you could, if you just download the fucking game. It's free. <laughs> He's certainly in a good mood this morning. He seems so much more relaxed than usual. Today should be a fun day. Okay. Uh, I suppose... The... The... the I think... I think we're clear. Alright, I think we're good now. Because he's in the living room, so there shouldn't be another dick. Everything was gone off the bed, and Harold wasn't in his in the room. I suppose he's putting everything in the wash now. He'd already cleaned off the wall and headboard, too, so he hadn't... So he had... Ugh, you can download it in the link in the description below. <laughs> you son of a bitch walking around your living room, nigga. I'm gonna have to edit... The, the, the intro out. I'm going to have to edit two dicks out. God damn it. <laughs> Feeling better after a shower? <laughs> you fucking asshole. No, what the fuck? Damn it. Feeling better after a shower? Mm-hmm, much better. I see you must be feeling great too since you didn't even bother putting clothes on. What, don't you like me au naturel? I don't mind. I just didn't expect it is all. Yeah, I didn't fucking expect it either. You fuck. <laughs> I should probably put some clothes on, but it feels nice not having to wear clothes. Then don't put on clothes. I don't really mind. I can tell. Your eyes keep wandering down. I can't help myself. Uh-huh. I need to put on clothes anyway since I'm about to make breakfast for us. It's my turn today. You just have a seat in here and I'll call you into the kitchen when it's done. He didn't have to get dressed, but I suppose it's a better idea anyway. I wouldn't be able to keep my eyes off of him. You got comfortable on the couch and it didn't seem like long at all until you were called into the kitchen. Okay, they're both fucking clothed now, so I'm gonna, again, trust this game. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, oh, now it's all in my bottle. Great. That's, yeah. So, what'd you make for breakfast? Everything smells good. French toast and scrambled eggs. Sit down and I'll bring you a plate. The syrup is already on the table. It's been a while since I've had French toast. It's been a while since I've cooked it, but it looks like it turned out just fine. I have a feeling we're getting get real comfortable with fruit bats. Skinny dipping is today. What? 
Today's D and D day. Are they really gonna go skinny dipping? Oh fuck! <laughs> but what if people show up early? I swear to God. Don Wolf retweet that you're streaming. I don't know. Probably not, since I didn't tag him. You get another fucking dick pops out of nowhere. Charles, you missed a lot. <laughs> I hope you don't mind powdered sugar sprinkled over yours. Nope, I'm good with that. Harold set a plate down in front of you and joined you after he prepared his own. Dig in then, let me know if it tastes good. I mixed some cinnamon and vanilla with the mix I, d I dipped the bread in to give it a little extra flavor. A fruit Darius? He's already a fruit, I don't think any- <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that insensitivity? Uh, I'm gonna take these off, it makes my head look huge. Not that my head isn't huge, but... Uh, I have an above average sized skull. Mm-hmm, it's a perfect addition. This is really good. Great! There are a few extra pieces on the stove if you're still hungry when you finish what you have. I might have to get seconds then. You powered through the first helping of food and decided to grab some more, but you took your time eating the second batch. I saw you got the bedroom mess cleaned up. I didn't want to leave it there. It had run down the wall and everything, so I had cleaned it all up. Oh, and while I was cleaning, I remembered something else. Hmm? What was that? Last night, you didn't actually use the condom. It was still on the nightstand, sealed. You dropped your fork and put your hands over your face. Oh my god, you're right. I'm, I was so caught up in the moment, I didn't even think about it. I I don't know how I managed to forget. I'm, I'm sorry, Harold. I, I promise, I'm clean. You're the first and only person I've ever been with. <laughs> I know, I know, it's okay. To be honest with you, I knew you didn't use it last night. Why didn't you tell me to put it on, then? I... I was really into la it last night, and I just wanted you to uh, unload inside me. Oh. Well, you got what you wanted, then, huh? <laughs> sure did. And trust me when I say it feels way better to go bareback. That, that is not a good moral to be teaching people. <laughs> I don't think people should be <coughs> looking at this game as a, a moral compass. Uh, but then again, it, it just, uh, I'm not dogging on this game by any stretch of the way, me of the word. It does teach you a lot of good lessons, but, uh, this sure ain't a Saturday morning cartoon show, I just say that. His face was flustered and he laughed again. He went silent after he just crammed as much food in his mouth as he could. So, what do we need to get ready for the team to show up? Took him a moment to choke down everything he had stuffed in his maw before he could talk. <laughs> I don't think there's much to do. There's too much to do. I just need to sweep the house and tidy up a few things here and there. Uh, shouldn't take me more than an hour or so. Hour to do. So it'll take half the time if I help? Yep. As soon as we're done eating, I'll do the dishes if you want to start sweeping. The kitchen, living room, and bathroom are the only places that need to be handled, since they shouldn't be going anywhere else. That'll be easy enough. It'll take no time at all. Uh, what about after we clean? Is there anything else to prepare? Really, that's it. We're ordering pizza later, and we have, when we have our L&L &L stuff all set, there isn't anything else we have to do. That means we can just relax for the day. We can take a dip in the pool. Maybe. It's still cloudy outside still, so I don't know if we'll get the chance. I suppose if there isn't any thunder or lightning, it'll be okay. And you still don't have a swimsuit. Do I need one? Do I need one? <laughs> you want to go skinny dipping with me? Could be fun. It's been a long while since I've done that, and I do have a good privacy fence. 
Let's finish eating and do our cleaning, then we'll go jump in the pool. Sweet! The food was all eaten, so Harold gathered the dirty dishes to be washed, and you got ready to start sweeping. I should have marked the timestamps on when the fucking dicks happened. God damn it. <laughs> I just know there's two, currently, and there's probably gonna be more, because they're gonna go skinny dipping. Oh, man. The broom's in the pantry and I'll wash the dishes and wipe down the table and counters after. I should have everything swept by the time you're done, then to the pool we go. Let's get started then. That took even less time than I expected it to. The sun even came out, so we should take advantage of that while we can. You ready to hit the pool? Yeah, let's go, in case the weather changes its mind. I'll grab a couple of towels on our way out, so let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this fucking strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they are not naked yet, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I'm not being too careful. Just trust that I'm reading it correctly, which would be a fucking rare feat, me reading something correctly, but god damn it, just fucking work with me. Man, the pool looks so great now. It's hard to believe it looked as bad as it did a couple of weeks ago. The water is so clear now. You ready to jump in? See? I am now! See, if I'd have just been a couple of lines of dialogue later, then there'd be a flashing dick out there just flying around. He didn't waste any time diving into the water with a monstrous splash. Oh boy, the water feels great! Hurry up and get in here! Here I come, then. You jumped into the pool near Harold, splashing more water on him on the, in the process. I repeat my voice, because everyone appears in this day. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> yeah, literally, as soon as the stream starts, there's just a dick, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Jumped into the pool. I already said that. Doesn't it feel good? Yeah, it does. Feels even better because I'm naked. It's the best way to swim. I've never been skinny dipping before. Really? Really? I've only ever swam in public pools, and you can't very well swim around naked in those. <laughs> I suppose not. You can swim naked here whenever you want. As you, as you can see, there's no way anyone can see us. I'd forgotten just how freeing it was to be naked in my own backyard. Harold fell backwards, floating on his back with no issues. His wet belly fur glistened in the sun, shining down on it. He also got a good view of everything floating between his legs. It's so much easier for me to float around now. All this fat serves a good purpose. <laughs> you float a lot better than I do, I'm sure. You laid back in the water like he had done and floated, but you couldn't keep your head above the water. Seeing you struggle, Harold waded over to you and put his paws under your head and, and back to help keep you up. You got more muscle than fat on you, so you aren't going to float like I do. His head moved down your back to your butt, and he made your hips bob up and down in the water. Ah, uh, this feels really nice, isn't it? This is really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Without warning, he hoisted you out of the water and tossed you toward, tossed you forward several feet. Several feet. You resurfaced quickly, sputtering as you regained your bearings. You shot him a dirty look, and he just laughed. What's the big idea? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. It's not fair that I can't do the same to you. There's no way I could lift your big butt. Well, things are a little different in the water. Harold dove under the water, and you watched the brown ball swim toward you. His body hit yours, and he popped back up out of the water. He wrapped his arms around your neck, and, cr and you cradled him in your arms. See, look at that. You're holding me up, big butt and all. <laughs> but if I tried to throw you, it wouldn't go as well. Do you really want to throw me away? You had no idea what he, uh, he could make his eyes look as pitiful as he did just then. No. I was hoping you'd say that. With Harold in your arms, you wandered slowly around the pool. His thick frame was nearly weightless in the water. I'm so excited to play L&L tonight. It's been ages since I last got to play. I'm looking forward to it, too. It's great that everyone's going to be playing with us. It's surprising that Darius is joining in. I wouldn't have expected him to care. Knowing him, he has his own reasons for coming. I have no doubts about that. I'll beat him if he tries to ruin our game, though. 
You and Chester both. Thunder. There's some dark clouds rolling in, it looks like. Well, that sucks. We haven't been out here long at all. Yeah, I think we can stick it out a little longer, though. There isn't any lightning yet. I don't know about... You, you didn't let him finish his sentence as you fell forward, submerging you both in the water. You laughed as you poked back up out of the water, but Harold didn't come back up. What's he doing? You moved around under the water, swimming beneath your feet, and that's when he decided to come back up. You were lifted into the air once more, and with a roar, he flipped you backwards over his shoulders. You were quicker to react this time, bursting up behind him and attaching yourself to his back by wrapping your arms over his shoulders and legs around them his middle. Sneaky old bear. Hey, you started it that time. It was payback for you throwing me, so things are uneven again. What do you want from me, then, so we can make things even? You better make it quick. Those clouds are moving fast. He was moving backwards towards the stairs that led to the, out of the pool. Let's just sit in the water a little bit longer. No funny business. No funny business, huh? As he went to sit on the stairs, you slipped from behind him and maneuvered around in front of him. You sat in his lap, facing him with your stomachs pressed together. What would you constitute as funny business? He held you by your waist, grinning as, you began to li as he began to lift you up. Throwing me or dunking me in the water, first of all. What about this? He reclined on the stairs and pulled you down onto his lap, pressing his soft cork and balls up against your butt. It even hugged your junk into his belly while he ground against you. A rumbling growl sent chills through your body as he pulled you in as close as he could. This is, uh, acceptable, right? He was grinning broadly when he sat back up, forcing you into a powerful, lusty kiss. Another growl reverberated through your body while his lips were locked with yours, and his paws had shifted to your butt. It didn't take long for your cork to get hoard against the stormark, and he didn't tease you for much longer, letting you go and pushing you back gently into the water. Oh, even now? Maybe. Only maybe. And there's more dick on screen, so there you go. He spun around and climbed out of the pool, shaking off as much water as he could. He watched in awe as his body shook, sending water everywhere, as every ounce of his muscle and fat quaked. Well, enjoy the view for a moment, then. That'll Maybe that'll do it for you. Uh, maybe don't enjoy it too long. We should get inside. There was lightning with that one. Yeah, you're right. It was nice while it lasted. We'll have to do this again whenever the weather is better. Yeah. And they're still naked. Still can't take the strawberry down. Uh, they're in the living room now. Guess I need to take another shower now. I don't want to smell like chlorine all day. <laughs> all day. I bet that smell can be strong since you're covered in fur. Yeah, it destroys my nose. I don't like how it feels when it dries on my fur, either. I just feel gross afterwards. So we should ha hop in the shower. We? I could use some help scrubbing my fur. My shower is plenty big enough for the two of us, too. What do you say? Come help your big bear get clean? How can I say no to you? Let's get you clean. I'll get in the shower started right now. <laughs> Wasting no time. And now they're naked in the bathroom. Still have to keep the strawberry up, but that's what the fuck I gotta do with. Huh, how do you like your shower water? Feel hot? Warm? Uh, I prefer warm. Eh. I'm fine with warm water, not too hot, not too cold. Middle ground kind of guy, huh? I can deal with that. I wonder what his favorite is. Does he like it hot? Hot showers? Uh, no, he doesn't like that. Cold? Does he like cold showers? Nope. Doesn't like that. I, you know, I'll just I'll go with that. Warm. I'm fine with warm water. The little guy can deal with that. Harold started the water and turned back to you. I would have woken you up to shower with me this morning, but I needed uh, some time alone to clean up. Uh, that's okay. I understand. It's been a while since I've had anyone to shower with me, so it'll be nice to have someone else there to scrub my back for a change. There's plenty of me to clean, that's for sure. 
Leave it to me, I'll make sure you're well-groomed and presentable. Oh yeah, you can help with that too. <laughs> This'll be great. The water feels ready, so... Shall we? Mm-hmm, make sure you leave room for me. There's plenty of room, so get in here. Harold was standing with his back to the wall, and the water was only hitting his legs. You get in the water first, since you're really easier to clean. Huh? Yes, Doombringer, it's incredibly awkward. Fortunately, neither one of them seems to be up at the moment, so I'm hoping that this segment ends right quickly before either of them gets up. I know Bree won't be up for another <laughs> number of hours, but Aaron usually gets up around this time, so I'm hoping the LNL stuff happens quite quickly. If I had an office, this would be a whole lot fucking easier. Ah, uh, sure. You stepped into the wa shower with your back to him and his belly brushing against you. Is the temperature okay? Mm hmm it is. Good, let's make sure you get all the chlorine out of your hair. He put his hands on your shoulders and gave him a squeeze as he let the water run over your head. Once, the, once your hair was thoroughly wet, he dumped a glob of soap on your head and began working his digits through your hair. He didn't know what else to do, so you just stood there as he massaged the soap into your scalp. Tell me if I'm being too rough. I'm not used to doing it for someone else, and I can be a bit rough with myself sometimes. It's fine. It feels good. Well, the problem with the strawberry is that it doesn't... If, if I move the strawberry, for example, like if I move it down here, then because of these leaves up top, you can't really see anything anyway. So I guess I could leave it like this. Uh, so at least you could see what room we're in. But you're not going to be able to... Because if I move it down too low, then the dicks will be able to fly over the the, cur the curve of the strawberry and through the leaves. Um, so I just gotta... I just gotta keep it like... I'll keep it like this so you can at least see what room we're in. So it's not just the eyes. The eyes. Ah. <laughs> So I'll, I'll keep it like this, so you can at least see some of the screen. I'll keep it there. That way the, the eye is just sort of slightly in the corner. <laughs> it's fine, it feels good. Explanation, Decker's by. I am, so... Uh. And since this is an all-in-one body wash, I can you just use that on the rest of you too. His paws finished with your head, and they began to slide down your neck to your shoulders and then to your back, rubbing soap all over his hands as he moves. I am a fan of Kingdom Hearts. I've played, uh, I've played munch a bunch of them. What kind of classes do you think the other guys will choose for the campaign? Huh? I've been thinking about what classes the other guys might choose for tonight's game, and I was wondering what you thought. Oh, I have no idea. I'm not really familiar with any of the classes, so I don't know what they'd choose. Uh, that's true. I'll tell you what I think, then, if they play classes based on how they act. I see Darius is playing a rogue, since he's a sneaky, conniving feline. It would certainly suit how he behaves. Spencer, I see. I can imagine him being a paladin or some other chivalrous character with a lawful good alignment. He forced his paws up under your arms and squeezed soap into your armpits while he continued to chatter. Oh, and Darius would definitely fall into the chaotic neutral kind of character. He might even run chaotic evil. He likes to mess with everyone, so he'll clash with whatever Spencer decides to play. Dozer is harder to peg, though, since he's more of a loner. Maybe a druid or a monk would suit him? I think he'd still be a lawful character, but I don't know if he'd go evil, good, or neutral.
His hands stopped at your sides, and he held you there while he contemplated what he just said. Hmm, I really don't know with him. We'll find out in a little while, though. I actually play on the chaotic good side. What does that entail, really? While he continued to speak, he moved his hands down to his sides, pausing again as when he grabbed your waist. My character's a good guy, but he doesn't really abide by any laws or any other authority figures. I have uh, more freedom to choose... I have more freedom than those confined to playing lawful characters. So you get along with Darius then, huh? Your breath caught in your chest as he grabbed your butt. He squeezed and groped it, lathering soap all across your backside. Our characters would certainly get along just fine if he's chaotic, but if he's chaotic evil... We might clash with each other. Ah, I see. Your butt is really squishy too, by the way. You could feel his fingers digging into your rear as he squeezed it. Is that a bad thing? Not at all. He pulled you back to him, putting his soapy paws against your stomach and chest. He circled them around your body, lathering you and as your water as the water rinsed it off. Unknown to Harold, you were boasting a large erection at this point, and it was bobbing up and down as he ran his paws all over you. Oh, I have other fruit bats. Yeah, it, it might be behoove me to change the fruit bat. I love the strawberry one, but let's see what other ones I could use. Let's see. Uh, the apple, the banana, the grapes, the orange, the plum, or the strawberry. I'll go with the orange. Where the fuck did he go? Where the fuck is it? Where the fuck did the orange go? Oh, it's up at the corner. There he is. See, right now they're in the shower so you don't see anything, but I'm keeping it up just in case. The orange is a little more devious, a little less soul-crushing. There we go. What would I be in this game, a rogue or a thief? Uh, I, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be either one of those. Uh, I tend to play, um, I tend to play, uh, warrior, soldier class. I don't know what exactly it is. I've only ever played full-on D&D once, and it was for a day, so <laughs> I, I, um, I don't know. A similar reaction was occurring behind you, and you could feel his quirk thickening up against your butt. I'll, uh... I'll let you handle your nether regions while you do my back. You should be mostly done by now. Ah, uh, yeah, I am. At least in the sense of being clean. He grabbed your shoulders and maneuvered you around the, sh the shower, positioning himself in front of you with his back to you. Uh. Stop eating the fucking table. Spoofy. Oh my god. His cork slapped and slid along against your leg as you swapped places, and it was nearly impossible for you to position yourself in a way that prevented yours from brushing against him. You can be generous with the soap. There's plenty of it and a lot of me to cover. Eh, you're right about that. You're a big bear. So big, he either doesn't notice my dick tapping him, or he has, does a really good job of ignoring it. His stumpy tail was wagging against you, and you started working your fingers against the back of his head. Be rough as you need to be to really get in there, and be sure not to miss a single spot. I don't want any chlorine left in my fur. I'll make sure to get it all. It was an arduous task, making sure every inch of the bear was scrubbed in soap, but you got the chance to really feel over his body, too. You moved from his head to his neck and shoulders, taking a moment to massage them after he pushed back into your hands. Hmm, I've been needing that. Maybe I'll have you do this some more later. My shoulders could use a good rubbing. If you want, I'll do what I can. 
Oh, definitely. Me and Aaron are planning on doing a first impressions of Kingdom Hearts 3 whenever it comes out. If we're still living together at the time, I don't know exactly when Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out. But uh, I definitely plan on playing that. Oh my god, I plan on playing that. That'll be great! <laughs> That's a tiger. That's Tony the Tiger, motherfucker. You a bear! <laughs> With his shoulders lathered up, he shifted to his back. He nearly pushed him over at first, and he just barely caught his balance on the wall as you grabbed his arm. Oh, there. I didn't think I'd knock you over with that. Was I too hard on you? No, sorry. I was just so relaxed I lost my balance. I could have fallen asleep standing up. Don't do that. I don't think I could drag you out of the shower. <laughs> I won't. Don't worry. I won't do that to you. You scratched your fingers through his fur, moving all across his upper back and working down towards his lower. You could hear him groaning as you watched him arch his shoulders. This continued all the way down his, the, his back to his butt. There was a brief moment of hesitation, but you kept going, scratching his soft backside and making it bounce around. You worked it over top to bottom, finishing up with a teasing grope before turning your attention to his wagging tail. <laughs> so cute and stumpy. M my tail? Ah, uh, yeah, it's been wiggling non-stop since I've been back here. Well, does that when I'm happy. It's a good thing, then. It is. You couldn't help but grab the wiggling extension and give it a squeeze. In response, Harold shook his butt around to free himself. Hey, now, that little guy isn't as tough as the rest of me. He's kind of sensitive, so you, should, you have to be gentle with him. Hey, sorry, I'll remember that. He you scratched your fingers over his butt again and reached down so as low as you could at least get the top of his legs. The only way I'm getting any further is if I kneel down and my face will be practically in his butt at that point. You can't see it, so my pause doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The choices are kneel down or let him handle it. Um... What do we choose, guys? Do we kneel down, or do we let him handle it? And while you guys choose that, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. <laughs> well, those votes, uh, those votes kind of speak for themselves, so I'll go ahead and kneel down. I need to get to as much of them as I can, though. I have to get down there. You filled your hand with soap and squatted behind Harold, putting you at eye level with his backside. Water was rolling down his cheeks, and it took a lot of effort not to just sit there and stare at it. You tried putting your focus into his tree trunk legs, though. Your hands could barely cover the width of his leg, and they felt like uh, one of the more well-muscled parts of his places on his body. Man, your legs are thick. I've never really noticed just how well-built they are. He raised his arm up and glanced at you behind him. You don't have to get my legs like that. I can handle them. No, no, it's my job to handle the back. I gotta get every bit of you. Besides, I got a good view from here. <sighs> his body shifted and he spread his legs a little wider apart, giving you access further up between his thighs. It gave you a clear view of the goods dangling between his legs, too, and you were distracted once more. You moved your hands slowly along his legs, mesmerized by the heavy swaying of his furry orbs. It wasn't until he moved again and stepped on your toe that you were snapped from your trance. It caused you to fall back with a thud, and Harold spun around quickly, leaning over to check on you. Yeah, oh, you okay? I didn't hurt you, did I? I'm okay. You stepped on my toe, but I'm fine. I think I was just more startled than anything. Come on, get up. I'll finish my legs off so I don't hurt you again. He pulled you to your feet, but he didn't put his back to you again. Instead, he propped up his foot in a shower and began scrubbing his legs while he talked to you. <laughs> it's been really pleasant having you in here with me. It's almost like being in the gym showers before it had stalls. All the guys would just be naked together in a single room. 
just guys being guys, talking, laughing, and whatnot. There was nothing gay about it, unlike how things are nowadays. Now, if you so much as glance at another guy when he's naked in a locker room, <laughs> yeah, it's what I would, it's what I was used to. But that changed over time. This is a little nostalgic, so it's been enjoyable. You know, it's the first time I've ever showered with someone. That's right, isn't it? How's it been for your first time? Couldn't have been with anyone better. It's been fun. Good to hear. I hope I haven't kept you bored with my rambling. Ah, it's been nice. He still had soap on his body, but he crushed you in his arms and hugged you and pulled you back into the water with him. A passionate kiss was shared between you, and he was staring into your eyes with a broad grin while he broke it. When he broke it, the water running and dripping from his face. I love you so much. I love you too, Harry. Uh, Come on, let's get dried off and go have some lunch. I'm getting hungry. Sure, I'm down for that. He ran his paws around the, his body one more time, making sure all the soap had been rinsed from his fur. He then sprayed the water at you so, you, so you could do the same. And there's another dick, there's another dick, there's another dick on the screen. But you can't see the thing because I put the orange up on the screen. You stepped out before him and he shook, and he shook off as much water as he could. You didn't fall. He didn't follow you out of the shower, though. You coming out? I need to dry off first. I have this amazing device built into my shower that helps me out. He pointed at the corners of the wall and the side of the shower, and you noticed that it had looked like little vents running from top to bottom. There are two dryers installed here to help me dry off. So it'll be much f faster for me to dry on off than drying using a towel. Oh, then you don't need my help drying off. I'll need some help brushing, though, so just give me a couple of minutes to dry off and you can brush me before we eat. Huh, <laughs> fine. With Harold's fur brushed, he made a simple lunch of meat-filled sandwiches and you fell asleep on the couch after watching a movie. Snuggled up against each other. It wasn't until several hours later that you woke up and noticed the time. And the clothes! So let's fucking get this orange off the screen, for God's sake. Now you can see the game we're playing! God damn! Oh yeah, that's actually a relevant thing. I've shown it a couple times, but... Uh, I got the Harold Grifter Titty Mouse Pad. Uh, because a friend of mine uh, got it for me. He, uh, he's, he, he doesn't, I can't say that, okay, he, I can't tell if he watches, because I feel like he said that he does, uh, I don't remember, all I, well, he has to, he has to know enough in order to get the, uh, to get the, the mouse pad for me, so either way, I appreciate it nonetheless, I really do. He, I got him to watch My Hero Academia, uh, for a fact, and, uh. And he loved it, just like I love it, so I'm glad we, we, we traded. I showed him a show and he bought me something. <laughs> it was, uh, it was just a present. He said he got me a present. Oh boy, I was so comfortable on the couch, I could have slept the rest of the day away. Hello. Jesus Christ. Spoofy! Spoof! For fuck's sake! I'm about to put you in the fucking cage! Spoofy! Jesus Christ. What's gone into him today? I've seen Hunter x Hunter too. It's my number two favorite anime. <laughs> Sorry. 
Same here, but the guys should be here in half an hour. It's already that late? Yeah, we slept for a little while, and no one's Spencer. He'll be here early. Huh, what timing? Oh, you're all here. Come on in, guys. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. We're gonna... Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, guys, you all rode together. It started storming, so I picked up Chester and Dozer, and since Darius was already around, I had I'd picked him up too. I was on my bike, so Spencer forced me to ride with him. You could have just driven your motorcycle over here and been soaked head to toe. That would have sucked, though. You're welcome, then. How'd you get here, Thomas? Looks like you've been here for a while. Uh, Harold picked me up before the weather got too bad. Harold, huh? We aren't in class or on the court, so you guys can call me by my first name. We're just hanging out tonight, so there's no need for anything too formal. That makes sense. It looks like you're Harold's, you're, you're Harold tonight then, coach. Haha, <laughs> yep. Let's all move to the kitchen and sit at the table. Chester and Dozer have their hands full. I've, I've come prepared, so I have a lot of stuff with me. Does anyone, does anyone need a drink or anything? Are you guys hungry yet? I'm starving. We should go ahead and order the pizzas. It's about time to eat dinner, so that sounds like a good idea. You guys are in luck then, since I already ordered the pizzas. They should be here in like 10 minutes. Oh, yeah? You said that was the plan, so I ordered an all cheese, all meat, supreme, and a veggie one. I think four extra larges to pizzas should be enough for us all, right? I ordered a few bottles of pop to go along with it, too. <laughs> yeah, that should be plenty. Thank you, Darius. I was going to take care of that. No sweat. Maybe you could cut me some slack on the next paper. <laughs> Don't count on it. Well, while we wait for the pizza to get here, we could talk about creating our characters. We will spend most of the time today doing that, but I'd, I'd like to kind of get started some, playing some too. To help speed up the process, I printed out a couple of pages of information for about some of the core classes, since I only have one book. Oh, I have a character book too. That, help, that should help out. Definitely. I don't need a character, and I uh, actually already helped those or make his. In that case, let me show you these. I sat down with Thomas to make our characters yesterday, too. Harold handed Chester the character sheets he had filled out with you the day prior. Really? We might get to play more tonight, more tonight than I thought. I'll look over these real quick, but since you're already a veteran player, you, should, you guys should be all set. You're playing a wizard, and Thomas is going to be a cleric, huh? Good stuff. What? Oh, a harem route? Jesus. <laughs> I don't think that would be good. Considering how fucking difficult it's already been trying to shift gears between everything, all these different voices. Oh, man. Guess that means all that's left is Darius and Spencer. You guys can take a look through the classes, then me and Coach can help you guys, uh, guys build the characters. What kind of character did you choose, Dozer? I'm playing a monk. It's a character that really fits me, I think. Huh, that's what Harold thought you might play. So we got a monk, a wizard, and a cleric. I wonder what the other two will choose. Hopefully so that that goes well with what we already have. Spencer and Darius browse through the books while with Chester and Harold looking on and discussing the advantages of each character class to them. During that time, the pizzas arrived, so the table was cluttered with food, drinks, pencils, and papers. Everyone seemed to be having a good time. So tell me, Darius. What? <laughs> it's like, what? What the fuck? Why are you talking to me? <laughs> How'd they convince you to come play with us? I wouldn't think that this would be your thing. I didn't have anything better to do tonight, so I figured why not. Besides, I wanted to see how things were going for you. He grinned and motioned his eyes towards Harold, who was engrossing and chatting with Dozer and Chester about his character. Th things are fine. Did you make use of the gifts that I gave you? I get the feeling you've been here a little longer than you let on. Coach seems especially happy and energetic, too. I don't think I've ever I've seen him like this. I, I haven't. You little liar. You totally have. Yeah, I say it all. But what? No, I, I really haven't. How was it with the wild? I bet he's vocal in bed, huh? He seems like he would be. I, 
I'm not... I... I ah, Spencer! What are you two talking about? Darius is just giving me a hard time, as usual. But I bet I'm not the only one who's giving you a hard time. Sh shut up, Darius! No surprise there, really. Pff, I was just asking how things are going between him and Harold, you know, since the dating. Ah, I see. He seems like he's in a good mood, so I suppose things are going well. Well enough. You slept with him yet? Spencer! <laughs> he totally has. Oh my god, Darius, no! Clearly, look at his face. I am so done with you two. Finish your character sheets already. You sat back down and put your face down against the table with a heavy sigh. You okay? Harold moved over to, you, to the chair beside you and put his paw against your back. Darius has corrupted Spencer. <laughs> Why you say that? You leaned over and quietly told him what they had said, making him facepalm and shake his head. Even Spencer? They're really hanging around each other the way they really are hanging around each other way too much. It's nice that they're, they know, though, isn't it? We don't have to worry about them finding out. That's true. What about Dozer and Chester? I don't think we have to worry about that with these two. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Hey, Harold! Come help me with this thing while Chester helps Spencer. Oh, sure. Uh... He left your side and went to help Darius finalize his character sheet. Not even an hour later, it seemed everyone had their characters ready, and it was time to begin playing. Oh, we got some fantasy music. Let me turn up the music a little bit. Chester took the seat at the head of the table and stood behind a piece of cardboard. He had... He's standing. <laughs> but he had unfolded across the table. Oh! Oh, man! Oh, man, this is cool! Oh, look at this shit! Look at him, he's... Oh, I'm creating... I'm cre No, what the fuck? I'm creating a world for you guys. Yeah, I'm creating a world for you. Okay, guys, it looks like your character's all set up and all set to go. So I'm gonna get, going to get the scene for the story and we'll get started. As we go along, I'll explain some of the rules and ideas behind everything. And I'm sure Coach will give you guys a good idea on how to play. First, though, let's go around the table and introduce your characters. We'll just assume you're all adventurers that have been traveling together for simplicity's sake. How about you start them off, Coach? Sure. He cleared his throat and pressed his fingertips together, holding his... Hands in front of his chest. When he spoke, he added a rasp to his normal voice. How the fuck is there... How am I going to add a rasp to that voice? Oh my god. How am I going to add a rasp to the Coach Grifter voice? I am Rogar, a wizard hailing from the city of Shrivelock. I have devoted my life to studying and mastering the arcane arts while dabbling in the science of alchemy. Unfortunately, I had to, mm hmm, take a surprise leave from the city when a remote part of the slums went up in flames during a study on just how flammable plague rats are. Needless to say, they are extremely susceptible to fire and tend to spread flames quickly when given the chance to run. <laughs> An interesting backstory, Relgar. How about you, Dozer? Uh, I'm playing a monk. His name is Batsro- but Batsorig. Batsorig. <laughs> I've spent most of my life in a temple training with other monks, and I've set out on my own to spread the word of our god, Daiji. Ah, what a noble cause in life, spreading the word of love and compassion. Since we're on the topic of spreading love, here's mine. My name's Big Dick. Big, big Dick. <laughs> it's Big Dick. Oh, God damn it. And I'm a quick-witted bard with a silver tongue. I roam the lands l looking to better man in every known city of our world. If you need information, leave it to me to get it for you by any means necessary. Of course, but still a handy trait nonetheless. I might as well follow up with him as we tend to work together as a team. While Big Dick 
distracts his mark. I sit in the shadows and wait for the moment to swipe a full purse or some other belonging that might fetch some fair coin. What's your name? My name you shan't have, but you may call me Dagger. Hmm, a clever rogue, I see. All that's left is you, Thomas. What's your character's name? Ooh, we get a character name, we get a character name. I know exactly what to call, and this is... This is a character name that I have used since I was a child, and it is my go-to character voice for any type of role play. It's it's a silly name. I got. <coughs> did you all like? Did you all like that? Uh, did you all like that Coach Grifter with a rasp voice? Did you think it? Do you think it worked? Let me know. Because I'm kind of pleased with it. But yeah, my character, my go-to character voice, I got it by translating words using Google Translate into another language. I don't remember what words they were, and I just took like a section of it. The character's name is Radovan. <laughs> Thank you for the positive feedback. <laughs> the character's name is Radovan. Feel free to use it. We'll spread the name. I'm Radovan, and I'm a cleric. <laughs> and that's really funny, because Radovan's never been a cleric before. I was born in a peaceful town called Norm, just on the outskirts of the royal city of Plainbore. Plainbore! Wow, you're really talking to like a boring-ass character. A civil war tore through the city and the effects of that reached my town. It was raided for supplies by the royal guards and my family was killed for resisting. I was but a child then and was spared, but grew up with malice towards royalty and have sworn myself to helping those in need. Sounds like a tragic tale, but you're on a righteous path. So that covers everyone. Railguard the Wizard, Batzorig the Monk, Big Dick the Bard, Dagger the Rogue, and Radovan the Cleric. Fate has twisted your destinies together, and your journey has brought you, brought you to a small town called Sapper's Hollow. The town is quiet and is far and far from any major cities. So it's odd to see such a mismatched band of adventurers traveling through it. But the whispers from surrounding cities have piqued the interest of your group, so you've come to do some investigating. Word has it that there is a trove of bandits lurking nearby. Normally something like this wouldn't interest a group such as yours, but if those whispers speak true, they have recently come into possession of a rather unique artifact. Be it for glory, riches, or justice, you all decide that there was no harm in checking the area out. You wander into the town and most of the folks around just leer at you from where they work, staring with, dist with distrusting eyes. Children follow you along, peeking from behind the corners of buildings or from the safety of their mother's skirts, but nobody dares approach you. And here our story begins. You're all in the town and need to decide what to do. I need to ask first, why would they be looking at us like that? Are we dressed funny or something? You would all be wearing basic gear for your classes, so that's mostly going to be left up to your imagination. Oh! Oh, look! Oh, that's so cool! Oh, look at, look at them! We, we're not there, of course, but... Oh, man! That's so cool! You can see all the characters. Darius, good lord, but... And then Harold looks so cool, and, and Dozer's got his monk out, and, and Spencer's got a rogue and a knife. Oh! oh, it's so cool! Um, oh my god, I'm about to cry. Hmm, oh, Thomas has something doodled on his character sheet. Is that what your character's wearing? Have a practical outfit or an impractical outfit? I think a practical outfit would be better. But, uh, of course, an impractical outfit might be funnier. But. 
I think, uh... I think having a practical outfit would be better. But what do you guys think? Do you go with practical? Which I think would be better. We want one vote for practical. Ooh, one vote for impractical. Oh, boy. Oh, another vote for impractical. Uh. Vote for practical. Oh, oh, my God. There's a slight leaning towards impractical, but I don't want to mess it up. It's practically tied, and I personally want to do practical. Ah, oh. You know what we want. <laughs> Let's see what the impractical outfit looks like, because that is what the most people... <laughs> No, no, practical, thank you. <laughs> did you, did you motherfuckers see this? Did you see this man? <laughs> practical, thank you, God. <laughs> now we get this, we get the thumbnail. We get the thumbnail of, of old. Uh, I'm going to... Close that and 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 turn that off for a second just so we can see The full majesty oh man All right, then it's back This is so fucking cool This is so fucking cool. Oh my god Ugh. I suppose so. It's kind of what I imagined it as uh, after looking at some pictures online. It's a really practical outfit, so I think everyone would be dressed in a similar manner. That makes sense. So, you do look a little suspicious to the townsfolk, since they don't know anything about you. Of course, they'd be wary. So what do you guys want to do? What can we do? Anything! There's so many possibilities. Oh, I wanna- I wanna get that face. Uh, but I've already done the thumbnail. I've already done the thumbnail. That's, that's enough with the thumbnail. Relga. Oh my god, they're using the character names. Let's. Oh shit. What the f. Let's ask around for the bandits. We're here for a reason, so we might as well gather some information about that. As you try to approach the villagers, they avoid speaking with you and retreat into their homes. None of them seem interested in having anything to do with you. Well, that's not going to work. There has to be someone around that will talk to us. How long have we been traveling? <laughs> I like having to remember the character names, especially since uh, the color is usually good enough to tip it off, but uh, Harold's color and Darius's color are very similar, so I have to really pay attention. You've been on the road for a couple days now. Let's see if there's an inn around then, and so we can rest. Maybe I can gather some information there. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's this Radovan! Oh my god! That's a good idea. We should do that. This whole thing is making me so fucking happy. You decide to wander around the town looking for lodgings. There aren't many buildings, and you find one at the edge of the town with a side denoting it as an inn. As you approach it, you are greeted outside by one of the villagers. It's just a clears his throat and changes his voice. <laughs> literally just how <laughs> that's <laughs> it's literally just how <laughs> what's Hal's voice again hail travelers oh greetings be this an inn we're looking for a place to rest for the day I it be but you're not welcome to stay here what why not Groups like ye never bring anything good to our town, so ye best be moving on through. We have coin that is as good as any other, so we can pay for your rooms. I don't care, ye can all leave. Can I seduce him into letting us stay? I could try intimidating him too. 
Seduce or intimidate? <laughs> well, I wonder. I wonder what, uh... <laughs> That's literally just hell. Uh, I think, honestly, Seduce might work better. I know y'all are gonna vote for Seduce, uh, but feel free to vote anyway. Now, <laughs> but, uh... I just don't think intimidating someone and then being unconscious around them would be a good idea. This is so fucking cool. Yep, everyone's voting seduce. Alright, let's give Darius a shot. Try seducing him first so we don't cause any issues. Leave this to me then. Alright, so this is the way it works. If you roll your d20 and you add your charisma modifier to it. Uh, so I rolled a 15 and my modifier is where? The number in the box next to your max charisma. So we add 3 to that? Yep. Alright, so let's play it out. You try to seduce him. Are you sure you can't let us stay here for the night? I'm sure your bed is plenty big for the two of us at least. If not with coin, I can pay in other ways. He looks, intri he looks intrigued at the offer. With what other ways did you have in mind? I go to whisper something in his ear. Darius leaned over to Chester and whispered in his ear, making the bull's face blush. Oh, uh, perhaps we can work out some arrangement. There is a stable out back you can stay in. Nobody will think twice about it, as long as you don't make a ruckus. We have enough trouble already. <laughs> Fucking big dick. They'll take whatever. They'll take what they can get, but you and I have other plans. What other kind of trouble have you been dealing with? Nothing you strangers need to worry yourselves about. I have a bar to attend to, so I'll be off. The stable is big enough for the lot of you, and it'd be best if you were gone by morning. Hmm. I bet we could get some more information out of him. I agree. Then why don't we go? Uh, then why don't we go for the rest? Uh, why don't we go rest for a moment and decide what we should do next then? That's a good idea. Let's go check out the stables. The stables are located behind the inn, and it's a modest size and is mostly clean. No animals occupy it currently, and there's full bales of hay. There no more than enough. There's more than enough room to build a small fire in the center of the stable that everyone can sleep around. Another night is sleeping on the ground. It looks like. Speak for yourself. I'll have a bed tonight. No surprise there. I think I can do something about our sleeping situation for tonight. Do tell. It just so happens I know a little spell for conjuring items. I can conjure up some nice linens for us and we can place them over the hay for a more comfortable night. If it means I don't have to sleep on the ground again, then get to conjuring. Alright, I'll expend one of my spells for the day to conjure linens. Sure, but don't forget, you need materials for it. According to the manual, you need to roughly 15 GP worth of fine silk and other quality fabrics to make one blanket. So you have that in your do you have that in your regent's bag? Uh, I forgot about that. It's been so long since I played. I don't suppose you'll be conjuring any of that up. I could probably just steal some from the inn if I need to. That shouldn't be too hard. That's not a bad idea. Should we really be stealing from these people, though? They don't seem to have much. It's just for one night. You can always give them back afterwards. That's true. So it's more borrowing than anything. Hmm, I don't suppose there's any harm in that. We can discuss this a little more later, though. For now, we need to figure out more about those bandits. Do you think that the pro Do you think that's the problem that the bar barkeeper was talking about? Most likely. We, why don't we send Big Dick to find out? <laughs> it it's really it's really tough to shift between voices, so I hope it isn't too distracting when I have to pause in between characters, or if I stumble a little too much. I really apologize about that. I'm sure I can milk some extra information out of him. If you guys want to wait here, I'll go see what I can find out. 
As you discuss what to do, you hear a commotion coming from the town. You hear a scream and a lot of shouting. Do you hear that? Something's happening. I do. We should go check it out. Someone might need a help. Yeah, let's go. In the middle of the town, you find a couple of rough, well-chiseled bandits armed with weapons. It appears they've been they've wounded a man who's on the ground bleeding. Oh my God, the bandits! <laughs> He's lucky we don't just kill him right now. Just give us your food, and we'll be on our way. You really don't want us to tell the boss that the folks have been giving this man a hard time. He wouldn't like that. Hey, it's our lucky day. These guys might be exactly who we're looking for. Should we confront them or just wait and follow them? We shouldn't let them hurt anyone else, so I think we should stop them. It'll be easier to get what we want, though, if we just wait and follow them. Oh, another choice. Chester's looking so devious, it's like, ooh. <laughs> We confront them or follow them. I mean, we seem to have an interesting array of characters. I don't know if we'd be able to take him on in a full-on front combat combatant situation. Um, so I don't know what to do. Uh, we got two votes each. Oh, we got more more follow theme. Another vote. We got two more votes for follow them. One vote for... Oh, oh, now it's even again. Oh, shit. Uh, everything's even again. Another vote for confront them. Hmm. Holy shit, we're up to 48 people watching? God damn! Hello, everyone! Follow, f confront, follow. Um. Alright, it looks like everything is dead even. So, I would say... Um. Follow seems to have... Ah, god damn it. And everyone seems to... It's literally... It seems like it's dead even. So I guess I have to choose, huh? I don't think that we have the ability currently. We are level one, after all. I don't know if we have the ability to confront them properly. But of course... Uh, we're not here to be heroes. We're here to... Uh, we're here to get information for them so as our mission is reconnaissance we shall f -f -f follow them we shouldn't cause ourselves any extra trouble so we might as well sit back and wait hmm. if things look like they're getting really bad though i think we should step in but only if things get bad the bend the bandits don't cause any more harm than they already have and the townsfolk comply bringing them several large stacks of food with their food in tow, they make their way towards a nearby forest. We shouldn't waste any time following them, otherwise it'll be harder for us to follow them. What? <laughs> Sorry, that just sounded redundant. I don't think we want to get caught in the woods at night either, since we don't know the area, and it seems to have a bandit problem. Let's go then, we have some bandits to take care of. Oh, it's in a forest now! Oh my god, this is such a nice moment! Uh. So into the forest, your group ventures. Sunlight filters through the thick canopy overhead, keeping your surroundings illuminated. I can keep up with them and signal to you all when it's safe to move forward. So we don't need them to discover we're following them. It's a really good idea. As long as we have pl plenty of distance between us, there shouldn't be any issues. All right, I don't need you to roll for stealth then. Uh, D20, right? Yep, and add your stealth level to that. Mm, 17 then. Keeping up with your target wasn't difficult. They were far from quiet, quabbling with each other over who would be taking credit for the current haul, while leaving a clearly defined path through the thicket. 
They had no idea they were being tailed on the way back to their hideout. You find their hideout, and it appears to be a small cabin nestled in the foot at the f against the foot of a mountain. What do you guys do now? We should make sure there are no guards around before we rush, rush right on in. I could do a quick perimeter check, perimeter check to see if there's if anything anything stands out. That's a good idea. We'll leave that to you, Dagger. I'll stick to the shadows of the trees and scout the area. Are there any guards or anything else I notice? Roll a perception check. It's one. You don't see anything that stands out to you. I'll go let everyone know the coast is clear then. I didn't see anyone around, so I think we're safe to move forward. Fuck! <laughs> well, way to not use meta knowledge, because I know plenty of players that are... Roll a one. You don't see anything. I'll roll again. Like, no. You got what you got, motherfucker. You can't fuck with me. <laughs> Alright, let's go then. Are you going to enter the cabin? That's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Yep, I think that's where we should be going. Oh, okay. Everyone roll for initiative. What's that for? You roll initiative when combat starts to determine tor turn order. We're going into combat? Didn't Spencer say it was clear? He did, but that's because he didn't see anything due to a low perception roll. It doesn't mean there was nothing there. Oh, I see. Good job, Spence. Maybe we should get your eyes checked. Someone else should have checked, too, just to be sure. Everyone rolled their dice, and Chester only took a moment to record everything. There's a single guard patrolling outside, and he notices your group approaching. He doesn't attack, but takes a double move action towards the cabin. We need to stop him before we can alert anyone else that they're here, that we're here. Radovan rolled the highest out of you guys. <laughs> that tickles me pink. Uh, so it's so it's his turn. So I can move and attack. Yep. Or you can move, move. Mm -hmm. If you if there are no actions, you can perform. I'll move once and just hang around until I'm needed. I can't do much yet. All right. Batzorig is up next. Then. I can only move twice to get close to do him. I can't do anything else right now. Okay. So Relgor, it's your turn. I'll cast Frost Snare on him to keep him from running away. Dexterity check for me to dodge, right? Yep. Uh, nope, he's frozen. Doesn't deal any damage either, does it? The spell doesn't, so he's just frozen for three turns. Alright, big dick, you're up. I'm just gonna sit back and watch everyone else. They have it under control. You're just texting on your phone. Hey, I can't really do anything right now, and y'all going plenty to y'all doing plenty to this guy. I'm still paying attention. I guess we'll move to Dagger then. I'm the only one that was close enough to move to hold on to attack, so I'll just move straight to him and strike with my dagger. Okay, then roll to see if you hit. Fourteen. You hit, so roll damage. I hit him with four damage. The blow was enough to make the guard drop to his knees. But please don't kill me. I, I'm i only doing what I was told to do. I don't even want to be here. I would just want to be back home with my family in the village. You're from the village? Yes. I was told to stand watch here and alert them if anyone approached. If they said if I didn't, they'd kill my family. So I've been stuck here ever since. I just want to go home to them. Can we trust him? I don't think he's lying. I don't feel any evil intent from him. Neither do I. And if he is lying, what if he tries to murder us from behind? Then we'd kill him. I I swear, if you let me live, I'll go straight to the village now. Look, I'll even tell you a secret. This cabin is empty, but behind the shelf in the further room, there's a passageway that leads to the mountain. To the mountain. It's where the other bandits are with their leader. Just please, please don't kill me. Oh, he's crying now. Let's just let him go. If he tries anything funny, it won't be hard to stop him. We've already injured him. He's right. I don't think this man will be a problem. You just let him go then? Yes, we're letting him go. 
The guard limps off through the forest, back towards the village. You're free to enter the cabin. What's in the cabin? The cabin has a musty odor to it. Dust and dirt lining every corner and crevice throughout, and the only light coming from the windows of each... Uh, uh, the only light comes from the windows in each room. All the rooms are empty but one, which has a tall shelf placed against the back wall. Hmm, the guard said there would be a passage behind, hidden behind a shelf, and it's the only shelf in the cabin. This has to be the spot, then. I'll move to the, I'll move the shelf. You slide the shelf aside to reveal a torch-lit tunnel burrowing back into the mountain. I wonder how deep this goes. We're about to find out. I bet this is where those bandits are hiding. Come on, everyone, stay alert, because we don't know what's down here. I'll lead the way, and you can all follow me. I'll cover the rear and make sure nothing comes from behind. Yeah, you make sure nobody comes in from the back. Nothing new there. What is that supposed to mean? Quiet, you two. We don't even know who's down here or who might hear us. Ooh, it's a new background again! Ah, uh, god damn. They really went all out on this. The tunnel you're, you're in seems to wind deep into the mountain. Your shadows dance across the wall, vanishing into darkness as you move in between the light that sparsely placed the between the between the light of sparsely placed torches. Jesus! Everyone, roll a perception check for me. Four, seventeen. I got a ten. I rolled a seventeen too. Twelve for me. Okay. After walking for several minutes, you hear voices coming from up ahead. Someone's up ahead, just around the corner. We should be careful. We'll kill a whole lot of them and trap their souls in a damnable box with all the rest. Nobody crosses us and gets away with it. Oh, did I hear him correctly? He said he trapped souls in a box? Do you think that's an artifact we've been hearing? The, the artifact we've been hearing rumors about? It has to be. We need to get our hands on it first, though. I'd say it's about time to confront these guys. Let me see how many let me see how many there are first. How about I check? I'm stealthier than you are. Be careful then. I'm gonna sneak along the wall and take a look to see what's in there. Alright, roll a stealth check then. Four Oh boy. As you appro as you approach the edge of the room, you trip over your own feet and fall on the ground in plain sight of everyone in the small room. Oh Jesus. <laughs> There are three bandits and their hobgoblin commander. Um, are you fellas in need of a bed, mate? I can offer you a discounted rate if so. Uh, let's go before he gets himself killed. Alright, everyone, I need you to- Wait, 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 before we get this started. What is it? Just how attractive is the hobgoblin? The bandits, I'm not really interested in, but the commander, I need to know. Uh, I'm not sure, that's not- Normally a stat I keep track of, but I guess the, for this instance I'll roll and find out. Just stares at the dice for a moment while everyone waits. Well? It's a 20. Does that mean he's hot? He's pretty hot, I guess. <laughs> Just, uh, I need you to listen to me and listen good. This is really important. What now? There he takes a deep breath and gestures with his hands to for added emphasis. Every single person at this table right now is into dudes in some way or another. Spencer covers his face with his hand and sighs loudly, and before everyone is able to argue against the lions, what the lion said, and places his hands up defensively and raises his voice. It's exhausting trying to keep track of who knows what. This is ridiculous. We've been dancing around it for ages, so if any of you think that you can say not me with a straight face without hurting someone's feelings... His eyes dart between Dozer and Chester, then between you and Harold. Go ahead and say it now. Oh. The clock hanging on the wall of the kitchen sounded like perfectly timed explosions with every passing second amidst the awkward silence. Chester seemed like a deer caught in the headlights, and Dozer's expression was is was ineligible, illegible as ever. Harold's face was contorted with a mixture of annoyance, but you could see a hint of relief in his eyes too. He made eye contact with Spencer, and when he lowered his hand, when he sh and he just shrugged, shook his head, and rolled his eyes. But you could see the corners of his mouth con curling into a smirk that was definitely not a straight face. That's what I thought. Now that we have that cleared up, 
A mischievous smile spread across his face as he continues. I'm sure you went through went. Mm, I'm sure you went through the trouble of writing up a detailed description for him, and now I want to hear it. Chester opened his mouth to speak, but Darius cut him off before he could. And don't even try to tell me that you didn't. Just read it. I bet everyone would like to know what this hobgoblin looks like. A bead of sweat could be seen rolling down Chester's forehead, but he turned his eyes down towards the table as he cleared his throat. Oh God, the hobgoblin is going crazy. Right, the, uh, the, hob, the hobgoblin, the hobgoblin stands heads taller than the tallest man you've ever met. Broad shoulders and barrel chested. Golden slabs of muscle sparkle under a sheen of sweat dusted with rusty ha- rusty red hair as he barks order, barks order to his subordinates. His voice has the depth and texture of molten chocolate cascading down the side of a broken cookie volcano. Holy shit, it's enough to make any woman or man, for that matter, quiver down to their, mm-hmm, down to their very loins, willing to jump at any command given. Everyone had a slack-jawed look of stupor on, his, on their faces as Chester shuffled his paper around, keeping his eyes down. He never writes that for my class. He never writes that for my class. <laughs> Chester looked up to see everyone staring at him, but des- despite the look of embarrassment on his face, he sounded defiant. Don't just stand there gawking at him. He is he has his spear pointed at you and is shouting a challenge, daring you to bring them down. Roll initiative. <laughs> Everyone was seemingly snapped back into the game and started throwing dice. You have the hobgoblin commander and his minions to deal with, so now you're so you're in for a real fight. There's nowhere to move to since you're all in close quarters. An all-out brawl is in order, so the battle begins. Hobgoblin commander attacks. He attacks Relgor with thrust. Relgor takes five damage. What will you do? Attack with weapon ability or defend. God damn, I did not expect that that move from Darius, but okay. Attack with the weapon, ability, or defend. What do you guys think? One vote for ability, two votes for ability, vote for attack, spam heals, I don't know what uh, that's ability, defend, ability, defend, ability, the clear winner here is ability, so we will go with ability, what ability will you use? We already have one vote for seduce him, we have one vote for heal, we don't need to heal, well I mean... He did take five damage. We got heal or holy flash. <laughs> the only person that he could heal right now is Harold's character, which took five damage. I think Holy Flash would be a better option. Because I can imagine that's like a blinding light. And everyone seems to be Holy F. Holy F. Alright, Holy Flash. Here we go. Who do you attack? God damn it! <laughs> this must have been programming hell. Um, Holy Flash the Sexy Beast, we got one vote for the Hobgoblin Commander. I personally think we should, uh, we should, uh, flash the Hobgoblin Commander. Uh, blind him, because he's the one dishing out the commands. Without his commands, the, uh, the bandits won't know what to do. 
Yeah, everyone seems to be the hot goblin. Yep, let's go with the hot goblin commander. Use holy flash on the hot goblin commander. Hot goblin commander takes one damage. Don't expect to get away with that. Bandit one attacks. He attacks Radovan with punch. Radovan takes six damage. Tiger used a healing potion on you and restored six health. Big Dick defends himself. Bandit two attacks. He attacks Dagger with punch. Dagger takes three damage. Mitsorig used a healing potion on Relgor and restored five health. Bandit three attacks. He attacks Relgor with punch. Relgor takes six damage. Relgor attacks Bandit two with his weapon. The attack hits and deals two damage. Don't expect to get away with that. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. He attacks Batsarig with Thrust. The attack misses. What will you do? Alright, so right now it, um... I think, uh... Harold and I think Spencer have, uh, damage dealt on them. Um... Our job as the cleric is to maintain people's uh, health, really. So I think, I think if yeah, heal Relgor. Um, I think in this moment that's the most important thing. And if we take, if we fucking vote on everything, then this is gonna take forever. Heal Relgor for three. Bandard one attacks. He attacks Big Dick with punch. Big Dick takes six damage. Unseen, Dagger steps through the through the shadows and shivs the enemy, dealing five damage to Bandit One. Don't expect to get away with that. Hey there, big guy. How about you come spend the night with me and see what, if you want to keep fighting? Big Dick tries char, tries to charm Hot Goblin Commander. Hot Goblin Commander resists his, uh, the advances. Bandit Two attacks. He attacks Radovan with punch. Radovan takes six damage. But Zorig attacks with precision strikes, dealing 8 damage to Hot Goblin Commander. No one expect to get away with that. Bandit 3 attacks. He attacks Dagger with punch. Dagger takes 5 damage. Rogo used healing potion on you and restores 6 health. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. He attacks Big Dick with thrust. Big Dick takes 4 damage. Big Dick is down! What will you do? Okay, so we got a couple options here. Uh, I think... Who can we heal? Relgor or Dagger. Okay, so since Darius is dead, or down at least... Um, You can someone explain to me why the bandits use punch when they have daggers. <laughs> That's a good point. Alright. We can't seem to revive Big Dick. Um, we can heal... Um... Do we heal Relgor or Dagger? Uh, Dagger seems to be the most beneficial. Uh, I think he also took the most damage. So, do we heal Relgor or Dagger? I want to know from you guys. Two votes for Dagger, one vote for Relgor. Alright, the majority is saying heal Dagger. Alright, so there we go. Heal Dagger for four. Bandit one attacks. Let's see how you do when you can't see anything. Dagger hurls sand into Bandit one's eyes, trying to blind him. Bandit one is blinded. Bandit two attacks. He attacks Radovan with stab. Radovan takes four damage. 
Zorg used a healing potion on you and restored four health. Bandit three attacks. He attacks Dagger with stab. The attack misses. Feel the fury of my wrath as it burns through your flesh. Relgor casts healing hands. That was not the voice. I thought that was the fucking hot goblin. So I fucked up that voice. So my bad. Relgor casts burning hands dealing four damage to Bandit 2. Don't expect to get away with that. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. What will you do? Let's see who we can heal. Heal... Relgor or Dagger. Uh... Gay lions never die. <laughs> um... So, in the... I think... For the second healing, we should heal Relgor. Because we didn't heal him last time. He hasn't gotten healed yet. Uh, Dagger could use some more healing, but we need to be... Oh, we got to vote for defend. Hmm. Do we heal Relgor or Dagger? Got to vote for Relgor. Y'all seem too busy to fuck making Overwatch references. Heal you, boo. Okay. Heal Relgor. Heal Relgor for six. Bandit one attacks. But he's blind. It just falls around madly, hurting himself in his confusion. He attacks Radovan with stab. The attack misses. Unseen, Dagger steps through the shadows and shivs the enemy, dealing uh, two damage to Bandit one. Go oh, back. Get away with that. Bandit one goes down. Bandit two attacks. He attacks Batzelrig with stab. The attack misses. But Zorig used the healing potion on Dagger and restored 6 health. Bandit 3 attacks. He attacks Radovan with Stab. The attack misses. Feel the fear of my wrath as it burns you through your flesh. Relgor casts Burning Hands, dealing 3 damage to Hot Goblin Commander. No expect to get away with that. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. He attacks Bitzorg with Thrust. Bitzorg takes 6 damage. What will you do? Ability, heal. Uh, the only one that needs healing right now is Bitsorg. Alright, so we healed him. Uh, Bitsorg defends him. Dagger defends himself. Bandit 2 attacks. He attacks Relgor with punch. B Relgor takes 3 damage. Bitsorg defends himself. Bandit 3 attacks. He attacks Relgor with punch. Relgor takes 1 damage. Relgor attacks Bandit 3 with his weapon. The attack missed. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. He attacks Dagger with thrust. Dagger takes 4 damage. What do you do? Um, so the damage on both Relgor and Dagger are minor right now, so I think, um, let's see what happens when we attack. You choose to attack with your staff. Attack which enemy? Um, the Hot Goblin Commander. Oh, we missed. Damn it. Dagger defends himself. Made it two attacks. He attacks Dagger with Throw Stone. Dagger takes 3 damage. Zorg attacks with precision strikes, dealing 5 damage to Hob Goblin Commander. No expect to give away with that. Bandit 3 attacks. He attacks Dagger with Throw Stone. Takes 3 damage. Oh shit! We should have healed him. Rago attacks Hot Goblin Commander with his weapon. The attack missed. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. What do you do? When we can't fucking heal. Ah, damn it. Well, we'll make. We'll clarify our mistake and make sure Relgor doesn't go down. Ooh, we heal Relgor for 8. Bandit 2 attacks. Bitsorg attacks with Bandit 2 with his weapon. Attack deals 1 damage. No expect to get away with that. Bandit 3 attacks. Attacks right of him with Throw Stone. The attack misses. Fire her up from the ground and engulf all who stand in my way. Relgor casts Flame Spire, dealing 6 damage to Hot Goblin Commander. No expect to get away with that. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. What will you do? Who needs healing right now? I think it's just us. Okay, so I guess we can't heal ourselves. Um, let's attack Bandit 2. Because we can't seem to hit uh, 
them. We get for two damage, Red Event attacks us with stab. We take five damage. Oh shit. Bedorg attacks Bandit 2 with his weapon. The attack missed. Bandit 3 attacks. He attacks Rolgor with stab. The attack misses. I... Flames explode and consume my enemy's body. Rolgor casts Fireball. Taking three damage to Bandit 2. Bandit 2 says the thing. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. He attacks Bedorg with thrust. Attack misses. What do you do? Okay, can we seriously not heal ourselves? Yeah, we need to heal us. Heal ourselves with four. Bandit two attacks. He attacks Bazorg with throw stone. Bazorg takes four damage. Bazorg used the healing potion on you and restored six health. Thanks. Bandit three attacks. He attacks Rogo with throw stone. The attack misses. Rogo used healing potion on Bazorg and restored eight health. Nice. A goblin commander attacks. He uses he attacks Rogo with thrust. The attack misses. What do you do? Does anyone need healing right now? No. Okay. So, um... Let's try Holy Flash on the Hot Goblin Commander again. Because it only did a little bit last time. Holy Flash on Hot Goblin Commander. Takes one damage. God damn it. Bandit 2 attacks. He attacks right event with Throw Stone. The attack misses. Pizorg attacks Bandit 3 with his weapon. The attack deals six damage. Nice. Bandit 3 attacks. Feel the fury of my wrath as it burns through your flesh. Rogo casts Burning Hands, dealing 5 damage to Bandit 2. Don't expect to end. Bandit 2 is down. Hot Goblin Commander attacks. What will you do? Who needs healing? No one. Okay. Let's attack Bandit 3. With 1 damage. God damn it. Dorg uses Fist of Fury, dealing 7 damage to Bandit 3. Who goes down? Feel the fury of my wrath as it burns through your flesh. Rogo casts Burning Hands, dealing 2 damage to Hot Goblin Commander. Don't expect to get away with it. Hot Goblin Commander goes down! The final blow has landed, and the Commander topples to the ground with a thundering quake. His once admirable body, now worn from battle, is marred with wounds and blood. The battle is won. What a shame to have to kill such a stud of a man. I wonder what we're missing out on now. Don't you dare touch that corpse. I mean, we have to loot him, so I might as well look. I'll loot him, you stay away. From his body, you retrieve his spear, his leather helmet, and his leather vest. What treasures do we find in the room? The room is littered with items, mostly boxes and barrels of food and liquors. You do, however, find a pouch full of 500 gold coins, along with a peculiar-looking box. The box is small, carved with ornate designs along every face of it. One side has an onyx crystal protruding from it, and it seems to be pulsing with a deep glow. Uh. This must be the artifact that we were looking for. What is it, though? Let me look at it. I have quite the proficiency with arcane objects. Hmm, roll a knowledge check. 21! You definitely know what that item is. Ah, I've read about this before. It's exactly what you'd expect it to be after what we've heard them talking about. Which is? It's a soul box. What does it do? It traps any nearby and loose souls inside of it. Meaning those that were killed in this room. The souls are trapped inside. What must that be like? Souls that are trapped here are forever restless, tormented by their final moments while living. The souls can be freed by destroying the crystal, but only insanely powerful magic can break it. If you're not careful, the newly freed souls can invade your body and attack Kin and actually kick your soul out if they're strong enough. Does this box serve any other purpose? The souls trapped inside also generate an immense amount of magical energy, and it can be harnessed to increase your own abilities. For example, I could unleash a firestorm so intense I could wipe that village off the face of the world in a blink of an eye, if enough power was stored within. Is there any way to detect how powerful it is? As you can see, the engravings all across this box are like paths for the magic to travel, spreading out from the crystal. This box is still rather weak. More powerful ones glow so bright, they are hard to look at, but they are... More powerful ones glow so bright they are hard to look at, but they're also unstable and run the risk of just exploding if the power isn't released. 
In other words, this thing is really dangerous in the wrong hands. This sounds really dangerous in our hands. Is it really worth? Is it really something we should keep? I think we should fence it. We could head back to the to a big city, and I'm sure someone would pay quite high for it. Perhaps. I think I'll study it while we have it. Just don't get us all killed or possessed. I think we should take as much of the other stuff as we can and let the villagers know about it and what's left so they can retrieve it. I agree completely with that. Let's gather what we can and head back. And with that, I think it's a good time to stop. Look at the time. Oh man, I didn't even notice. Is it really late already? Is that late already? Yeah, I don't have much more planned out yet either, so it works out perfectly. If you guys want, we can play again next weekend, and we'll pick up right here. I'll give you all experience, then we can resume the session. I'm down with that if you all want to come back and play again. I really had fun tonight, and would love to do this again. Sure, I'm down for that. I actually had fun too, so I think I could manage to make time for it. I'm free on Sundays. You can count me in too. Sounds like a plan then. Cool. I guess we'll pack up and head out then. I'll help you with that. I want to talk to you about something else. I'll get to work on cleaning up the dinner stuff then. I can help with that. I'll help too, so it'll take no time. And I need to go to the bathroom. Everyone except Darius set about cleaning up after the night's events. So, you and Chester are a couple, huh? Yeah, we have a lot in common, surprisingly. I can't believe Darius just up and outed everyone like that. To be honest, I don't mind. I'm actually pretty happy about it. Chester was worried about how everyone would react, but knowing that we all have something like that in common, I'm sure he'll be relieved. Spencer and Darius already know about me and Harold, but I guess you and Chester know now too. Dating your teacher for a better grade, huh? It, no, that has nothing to do with it. I'm just teasing. I kind of thought you two were awfully close. The biggest surprise to me is you though, Spencer. I had no idea. Yeah, I'm gay. I can't believe it. it's something that we've never talked about, or is something that I've never picked up on, that I've ever picked up on. I don't act gay, so I wouldn't expect you to realize- Act gay? What the fuck does that mean? It's been a weird thing for me to come to terms with, but I guess now that the cat's out of the bag, we can talk more about it later. We'll have to. I have to say, I certainly feel more relaxed. Harold has seemed pretty relaxed too. I could tell. After that little debacle, he couldn't keep his hands off of you. <laughs> yeah, he can be really affectionate at times. I'm glad to see you both happy, though. I don't think I'll have anything to worry about. I don't think I have to worry about him anymore. He's in good hands, I think. With most of the team working to clean up, it didn't take long for everything to be back in order. The kitchen looks as clean as it did when we arrived, so I think we're good to go. Thanks for helping clean up. Of course. We helped make it, so it's the least we could do. Chester, Darius, it's time for us to get going before it gets any later. I'll just finish putting on my stuff, too. Thanks, guys, for playing tonight. It was a blast. Thanks for having me in the group, too. I've needed something like that. It's glad to have- I'm glad to have you in the group. You really helped the game run smoothly. I'll plan something for next week, and we'll continue the campaign, then. Alright, then, let's get going. I have to drop you guys off before I go home. I need to- I need to get you home too, Thomas. I have class in the morning and it's pretty late. Oh yeah, let me get my things and we can go too. What a day. Day? What a weekend. It's been amazing, Harold. I've had such a great time with you. I've enjoyed all the time I've gotten to spend with you too. I'm glad you've enjoyed it too. We'll have to plan another date for this week. Mm-hmm. I can't believe Darius called everyone out like he did, too. Oh man, right? I called everyone by surprise. I swear, I was on the verge of having a heart attack. I was mortified! But since nobody objected and things continued like normal, I felt so relieved. We can be a bit more relaxed around the team, at least. Yeah, I never thought anyone would- I never thought anyone would care, but now that it's all out in the open, it's a big weight off of me. Who would have thought the entire team likes Kirk? <laughs> yeah. You laughed awkwardly and patted your knee. Now go get some rest. I'll see you again at the courts tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you then, Harold. Let me know when you get home, okay? You know I will. I love you, babe. Have yourself a good night. And I love you, Harry. 
He gave you another quick kiss and waved to you as he slid out of his car and as you slid out of his car and headed to your room. Maria was nowhere to be seen, but I'm sure she'll be eager to hear all about the weekend I when I see her tomorrow. What's this? A bag and note on my desk. Since you've had such a busy weekend, I thought I could help you get started on, a little, on your little on your little gift for Harold. So here's a quill, ink, and paper for you to write your poem on. Be sure to practice a lot when you get a frame for it once you've finished it. Maria. Aw, Maria. Thank you. I know I'll be what I'll be doing before practice. Time to get to bed now, though. Ah, oh, that was such a lovely day. Oh my god, let's see the notes. How was LNL for you guys? There's a lot of stuff going on there, so it's uh, so there's a lot to check out. Let me know what you think about it and everything else that's going on. Thank you for reading, everyone, and I'll catch you all next time. Well, that was just lovely. A two-hour episode of extracurricular activities? That hasn't happened in a long time. Uh. That was a phenomenal episode. I... That was that was just a fun fucking day. Just a little salty that I have to edit two instances of dick out of it. But gotta do what I gotta do to appease the YouTube Puritans, so enjoy it while you can, because I'm gonna edit that shit as soon as the episode is processed. Anyway, thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of Extracurricular Activities. On the next one, we will be taking a look at uh, whatever has been updated for the Darius route. And before finally going back to the Chester route. Because um, we've, uh, I don't know how many days have been added to that. But considering that Harold is up through day 28, uh, I have no fucking clue what the limit is now. So... Thank you all very much for being here. I have had a blast. And on the next... I already said that. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, on the... Uh, fuck. Outros. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everyone.